Hello everyone, I'm Carol Reed. Welcome to Storytime. Our story today is called Crocodile Tears. Whether you're teaching your classes online or sending children work to do at home, here are some ideas that I hope will keep your pupils engaged and learning. If you're teaching your classes online, get children to do a mirroring activity. Touch and name parts of the body, head, ears, neck, tummy, and children copy or mirror exactly what you say and do. As they get used to the activity, you can speed up. Play a version of the game Crocodile Crocodile, as in the story video, and add additional instructions. For example, Crocodile Crocodile Run, Crocodile Crocodile Swim, and so on. Mime having a headache or a toothache, and children name the aches. Children can also take turns to mime and guess the aches too. Get children to act out a simple role play. What's the matter? I've got a headache. Oh dear, I hope you're better soon. Thank you. Link the story to content-based education. Elicit or teach the children that crocodiles are reptiles and that the main features are that they have cold blood, scaly skin and lay eggs. Ask the children if they think there's another reptile in the story, the turtle, and they can also identify other reptiles they know, for example, snake, lizard, tortoise. Be ready though to clarify that a frog isn't a reptile, it's an amphibian. You can also link the story to culture by teaching children a traditional song, such as Never Smile at a Crocodile. In my experience, children also enjoy learning the expressions See you later, alligator, in a while, crocodile. And you may find they start using them with you too. If appropriate, you can also link the story to values education. You can tell children that the title of the story, Crocodile Tears, is an idiom or expression in English to use when somebody is pretending to cry or to be sad. An example might be when a child cries and says that the brother and sister hurt them, when in fact what they really want is to get their brother or sister into trouble or to get attention for themselves. You can ask children whether you think crocodile tears are okay or not okay and listen to their response, obviously recasting it in English. If you're sending children work to do at home, you might like to get them to complete a version of the rhyme, I'm a clever crocodile, in the story and to draw and paint a picture of, the, of a crocodile and label the body parts to accompany this. You could also get children to complete a simple gap fill of the role play, What's the Matter? and to act this out with their parents or siblings at home. If appropriate, communicate with parents and get their support in helping children to make an oven glove or mitten crocodile puppet similar to the one in the story video. Children can use paper or felt to make eyes and ears and stick these on the crocodile and paint the oven glove green. They can then take a photo of their puppet or make a video of themselves using their puppet to act out the rhyme and the story and the song in the video. Get children to record the body vocabulary and the aches vocabulary in their story time picture dictionary. And as always, it's a good idea to get children to review their learning from the story. For example, I can name the parts of the body of the crocodile. I can act out the song. If you're teaching your children online and sending them work to do at home, 
you can use a combination of these ideas. I hope you and your children enjoy the story Crocodile Tears and I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meanwhile, stay safe, stay positive, look after yourselves and after others. Bye for now.